back from the Mobility Expo in Chicago this time, and we had an amazing time. It wasn't really in Chicago, Illinois. It was in Schaumburg, but we stayed at the hotel that the convention was also holding the um, expo, so we had a kind of an easy transfer each day, which also allowed us to run into a lot of people that were going to the expo. Like, I ran into some guy in the elevator. We ran into people at the restaurant. Yeah, what was that, what was that server's name? I can't remember. Oh, Kevin. Kevin. Not Kevin. Not Kevin. It's, his name was Anthony. Hi, ne- hi, not Kevin. Hi. We've met a lot of people that we don't know what their names really are. We have not Kevin. We have maybe Mike. <laughs> yeah, there, there was a couple people that didn't give their real names the first time they met us, or maybe not their first names, or maybe they're called something else. I don't know. There was a lot of weird experiences, but we had an amazing time, and honestly, I think we met a lot of people that we didn't meet the first time, and there was a lot of people that said they had saw us in New Jersey and just didn't come up to us. Yeah. So they were excited to see us in Chicago. And then we met a lot of people just because we were in Chicago and they didn't even know about the ability expos or the disability community or anything. So that was super cool to help kind of further educate people that yeah. aren't in the community. To see and then that they change. invited other people out. Yeah. 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 So we had like kind of like a chain reaction of people coming to the Ability Expo because they heard about it via TikTok or Instagram or whatever, and they didn't know anything like that existed, but they wanted to come see us. And so that was super fun. It was super cool to have those conversations with people because that was us a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And seeing how just one little interaction in New Jersey did such a difference for Chicago for us. That was, I think that was the coolest thing. Yeah. And I think that one of the other cool things was we had people come back multiple days. Like, like New Jersey, we had a couple people, but we had like more people in Chicago because Chicago was a little bigger, but more people come multiple days. We met a couple people. We talked to a lot of people about recommendations and where to go, even if it's not in Chicago, like if it's New Jersey or LA, they they told us places to go because apparently the expos are also held there like every year. So that was super cool. And Mark played the piano at one point. Yeah, yeah, they they left a piano unattended, so I played that for a while. And then um, a uh, a blind girl showed up and was listening, and then she wanted to play, so she sat down and um, kind of taught her how to play "Let It Be" and. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I, I wasn't there to see him teach someone to play. I was there at, I guess, towards the end of his songs. And I I got a couple videos for him. And, I mean, it sounded really good. And everyone was, like, clapping on their way in, which was a little weird seeing people walk and clap to the expo. But that, that was kind of cool. It was fun. I, yeah, it yeah. was really fun. And then I had run into someone in the elevator on our last day. We ended up... Um, yeah, it's probably the first day we were coming in. We were just trying to get our badges. And somebody comes up to us. And the last day... Uh, yeah, you got you got, you got got uh, hung up in the elevator. Yeah. We got we got hung up in the... We got the uh, elevator a lot. And, um we're, we're uh, the hostess. Yeah, we got stuck by yeah. a lot of people. The first day we got stuck um, quite a bit. And yeah. honestly, it wasn't <laughs> that big of an issue because they had come there because they saw the TikTok. It actually started on the plane. It did start on the plane. <laughs> so we got on the plane and it seemed like we were on the plane with a bunch of recruits for the service. Yeah. And one of the... Navy. Pe- yeah, I think it was the Navy specifically. But one of the people... Um, had asked for my photo, like, while we were, like, boarding boarding back onto Chicago. And so we we did that, and then we got to the hotel, and we ate that night, and (laughs) our hostess had recognized us. And then after the hostess recognized us, we had someone... Yeah, someone who recognized us who was going to the expo. Um, so that was super cool. And that was all day one. So it was already a lot for day one for yeah, us. And yeah. it was just really cool to see how many people within the community and with not in the disability community recognized us and actually talked about how the message is getting to somewhere and it's actually helping mindsets grow. Because that's the whole point of doing all of this is to expand the knowledge on dwarfism Mm -hmm. and disability and 
what it's like to just kind of um, live in a normal state of life well, and how not they're not just that, that different. But you're also, um, she had a lot of people coming up to her, you know, that were just saying how she inspired them, you know, how, uh, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, you don't have to have the same disability to 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 identify with somebody else. It's 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 more um, how you live your life, how you present yourself. But yeah, you were you were getting a lot of people that were saying how inspired they were, and, and I found that um, interesting. Yeah, I there was a lot of people that <sighs> not in the similar situation to me, whether they were wheelchair bound or they had spinal issues or whatever the case may be, that said that I spoke volumes for what they feel. Yeah. Yeah, and they felt they felt like she was speaking for them in a way. Uh especially with the girl Kirsten who yeah. couldn't speak. Yeah, she She was in a wheelchair, she couldn't speak. Yeah, she was completely Yeah. Having, it. but like she could type, she had a full functioning brain. You could have a conversation with her, and that oh, yeah, was yeah. absolutely amazing. And the fact that I could speak for her in a sense, and she can relate to me, was absolutely just the most beautiful thing because that's all I've wanted is to find my community in a sense. I didn't fit in with tall people. I didn't fit in with other people with dwarfism because they didn't view me you kind of the same. didn't fit in with people your age. I didn't yeah. fit in with people my age. I didn't fit in with older people. and Well, really old people you did. Because they like to pinch my cheeks and like think I'm a doll. Yeah, and, and give you Werther's Originals and... Toys. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I never had that community that understood me. I always was kind of searching for that and yeah. now I feel like I've kind of finally found that and to kind of get that reassurance that I am doing right by the community is kind of everything for me. Yeah, if people are wondering what our goal was um for the show, that's it. Yeah. What what the goal for the show was more than anything else was getting her story out there because I mean honestly the only Shauna that I've ever known is Shauna. I've never seen anybody else that, that was in her specific situation. And the thing is, is that I know the, the, the issues that she has to deal with on a daily basis. Um, and the thing is, is that what you don't realize is that other people out there, and they don't think that people understand their situation or this person's situation. And the thing is, is that it starts a conversation and it starts people feeling, oh, you know what? I'm not alone. Yeah. But at the end of the day, no matter <clears throat> if you've gone through a medical battle or you've gone through an emotional battle or a physical battle or whatever, we all feel at some point that no one understands us, that no one is going to understand what we're going through or how we feel. And at the end of the day, if we all have those feelings, then we're all pretty much very similar. We just have our unique personalities, the things that make us different, but they don't have to make us so different that we can't get along, that we can't understand. Yeah, there, there was a person that um, was telling a story about um, gentleman's in a wheelchair, and um, he... Uh, he was talking to somebody and the person started talking to him like, you know, like talking down to them, like, hi, how are you? And, and that was one of the things that he said, he said, just cause these don't work doesn't mean that this doesn't work. And that's the same thing with, with, with anybody that's in any kind of a situation is that we can't assume we know something about somebody just because they look a certain way. And I think that's a, a really important issue that that needs to be addressed yeah. you know and i think going to these type of abilities expos and stuff really helps because you're seeing all these people you know and they're that they, they got wheelchairs and they've got people there that pimp those things out they get new you know rims and stuff and yeah. um different types of seats yeah there's a guy there he he was in a wheelchair and he has a, a fiance they're mm -hmm. great people amazing yeah super and, sweet came two days she's you know she she's walking around with him and he got new uh, new rims and stuff, and and they just you know it, it's 
it's a way to to see how people deal with these situations. And also, again, we can't say this enough. It's not a question of if you're ever going to need some of this stuff. It's a question of when. And the thing is, is if you know where to go, if you know how to, you know, how to find this stuff, it's going to be a lot easier because we didn't know this stuff. And you're less scared for it to happen. Yeah. But I, I think it's so important to immerse yourself in this kind of community because you'll realize at the end of the day, we're all basically the same. We're human. We have conversations. We're functioning in ways that people don't seem to understand or people assume that we're not. And it would really break the stereotypes and the taboos that come with disability if people immerse themselves or started conversations about the disability community. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has dreams. They have aspirations. They have goals. You know, and the thing is, is that a lot of this stuff is just to help people meet those goals. I mean, there's there's a wheelchair that gets up on just two wheels and just, you know, yeah. it, you know it's I, like they're standing almost. It's, I it's think a lot of average typical people whatever you want to call that word um don't understand that it is a privilege to live the way you live to live a life without having any medical mental physical issues is a privilege whether it's been a wealthy a poor a good a bad life it's a privilege and your worst day would have been somebody else's best day in the back of their mind we always have to remember that it could always be worse. And someone is living that way. You could have this head of hair. <laughs> so just remember to be kind. Remember to immerse yourself in the communities that you want to understand because you're not going to understand unless you full force tackle that and try to ask those questions. Be a part of the community. Go to the expos. Yeah, go, go to all these expos. They're, go to the meet and greets. Anything that you can educate yourself on that you would like to educate yourself on, I implore you to do. Have an absolutely amazing day, though. Bye! <laughs>